I want us to share, and uh, I will be brief, God helping me, and also to maybe uh, be quick in working it out, uh, concerning the topic, God wants to use you. Amen. God wants to use you. Now, an important uh, exclaimer which I want to point out to us is that God is calling you and he wants to use you. Amen. Now, turn to your neighbor and tell them, my God is calling you and he wants to use you. It's very important, brethren, for us to understand that our God is calling us and he wants to use us. Amen. Amen, church. Uh, in Matthew twenty-two fourteen, 14, the scripture says, many are called, many are called. So you are in the bracket of many are called. God has called many and he is still calling many. So you don't need to disqualify yourself and think you are not worthy for God to use you. I want you to see yourself, the Lord God beckoning you to come so that he may use you. He may use you at home. He may use you in college. He may use you in the marketplace, in the businesses, in everything that you do. God is beckoning each and every one of us, calling us to come so that he may use us. Praise the Lord. We need not to be like Adam, whereby we hide ourselves behind the trees. Even if we hide, he will still call our name and say, Richard, where are you? Because he wants to use us. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, church. So God is calling us to use us. Now, how do you know God is calling you? Now, the fact that you are here today is the sign that you have been called. Tell your neighbor, I have been called. Now, I don't know if you are answering that call, but I want to inspire you so that you answer that call. Amen? Yes. You know, sometimes we think when God wants to use us, he may want us to put on the collar so that we are walking. Have you seen some people with a collar? Huh? So we are thinking maybe the preacher is preaching so that we put on our collar. And maybe you hate that thing. So you don't want to put on that collar. Or maybe you are thinking now to be in suits. That's when God will want to use me. Thank God. Okay, like my brother here. Amen. Yeah, just rise up. You, you are thinking, I don't like suits. So how, just turn. So you are thinking, how will I put on a suit every time if God is calling me? But I want to tell you that God is calling you. The, by the, you coming here this morning, it means God has called you. Amen. And God has called you for something. That's why you are here. Because God calls us for a purpose. He doesn't just call us. He calls us for a purpose. So you are called for a purpose. And the important thing is for you to realize that I am called for a purpose. Amen. You know, sometimes we may be coming from a background of a religious family who loved the church, who disciplined us to go to church, who wanted everyone in their household to go to church. So we always think this is, I'm going to church because of my parents. But I want to tell you that God has an agenda for you. Or maybe you may have come to our church here and you know, if you are a young man, maybe you have seen some good young ladies. And you are thinking that one. So you follow her to church. But I want to tell you that God has an agenda for you. Amen. In this place, he meets with you. He refocuses your life. And you find out that Kumbe, God was calling me. It wasn't that lady or that brother whom I was following. Amen. 
So what is it that God is calling you to do? What have you been trying to avoid? What excuses have you been making? There is need to let go of some things if God is calling you. Amen? There is need. There are things like, take for example. Amen? Let me, can I call somebody to come? Let me call Brenda to come. You see, she has left some things which she had there for her to come. So when God calls us, there are things which we need to discard, to leave them behind. We have to throw them away so that we answer to the call. Amen? Thank you. So that we answer to the call. We have to leave some things. We throw them away. They might be some friends. We don't throw them away, but we have to leave or severe cut off that friendship. It may be some things that I'm used to do, but I have to stop doing them so that I focus on the call, what God has called me. And Paul says, I'm pressing on toward the mark. I want to get hold of that which God called me to. I want to get hold of it. So there are things you discard, you leave them, you cut off from your life. It may be some laziness. Amen. Now, one of the problems we have in this era is laziness. Laziness to pray, laziness to read the word of God, laziness to attend meetings, laziness. It's always there. And it comes in coated with excuses. You know it was doing this. Even God knows, but we don't want to no, or to understand, we say God understands it rained. God understands it's very cold. God understands, but do you understand that God is calling you? Now let's look at this scripture because there are a lot of things, a lot of things so that I cut off. We look at a few things. At least we reach somewhere. And uh, Pastor Paul, I will entrust him to continue with the message. <laughs> Amen. Uh, Leviticus, Leviticus. If, if you can open your Bible, if you have your Bible, in the book of Leviticus, chapter 8, it's a very interesting scripture, but we are looking at someone whom God called and someone God prepared to use. And this man of God, he's called Aaron. Now, sometimes I don't like some of the things he did, but he gives us something that is very important. He goes, he's a great man. A great man that is called of God and God was using him. But sometimes he turned and he built an idol for people to worship. And he took it, he just took it very casual. Yeah. But we thank God for the man of God, Moses. Amen. We thank God for our man of God, like Bishop. You know, sometimes we mess up, but he prays, he says, Lord, have mercy upon Richard. Have mercy upon Wangeshi. And God hears our prayers because we have done things foolishly. Tell your neighbor, do you do some things foolishly? Yeah, they may not answer you because they are in church. They are looking bright. They are looking intelligent. They are holy. Yeah, they are church people full of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> okay. Leviticus chapter 8, verses 1. Uh, as as, as uh, we walk on our screens, please get it. Verses 1 to 3. This is what the scripture says. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, take Aaron. Take Aaron and his sons with him, and the garments, the anointing oil, a bull as the sin offering, two rams and a basket of unleavened bread, and gather all the congregation together at the door of the tabernacle of meeting. Now, there are 
few things there which I want to just highlight for you to understand. Number one is you the person. You the person. You as the person. The scripture says, take Aaron and his sons. Speaking concerning you as the person. Then number two, the clothing. He says, and the comments. Then number three, the anointing. Or the oil. He says, the anointing oil. Then he continues to say, a bull as the sin offering to rams and a basket of unleavened bread and so forth. So that speaks concerning the sacrifices. The sacrifices. Then number five is the ministry. He says and in verses three, and gather all the congregation together at the door of the tabernacle of meeting. Now we find there that is their ministry. The ministry was the people. Let me just highlight a few things concerning those five things. You, the person. You, the person. Mark these things. Very important. You, the person. God works with individuals. He works with us. He doesn't work with... Okay, he may work with animals, but the issue is, according to him... Why he made you and me in his image after his likeness is for us to accept him to walk in us and to walk through us in his creation. That's why he gave the mandate of ruling the earth and the creation of God to the first man he made, Adam. But take church of all the fowls of the air, all the animals in the sea, all the animals in the land and so forth. Take charge of them. So the issue which we are looking at here is you and me as the person. Take Aaron and his sons. Now in Ezekiel 22 verses 30, Ezekiel 22 verses 30, <clears throat> the scripture says, we find God is speaking and he says, and I looked for a man. Among them, I looked for a man. I searched for a man among them. So we find God is looking for someone. If he can find someone today in this service and say, I want to use this person in their family to save their people, to save our people in their clan, maybe their relatives, maybe their neighbors, to save them. I'm looking for a man at the place of work or in college or in high school, wherever place you are, in business, every place you are, God is looking for someone that he may use them, that, he may, that, that the people may not experience the judgment. So he's looking for a person in our midst. Amen. Now in Isaiah also 6, we find out the story of Isaiah and he comes out when God speaks out and he says, whom shall I send and who will go for us? Whom shall I send and who will go for us? He's looking for someone to send, to heal somebody, to deliver somebody from destruction, to save somebody from hunger. He's looking for somebody. Not anywhere else, but in this place. Amen. So, that's why it's important for us, we are fail ourselves, we say, Lord, here am I. Let me be that man, let me be that woman, let me be that person, that you may use me to touch someone. Let me be that person. Praise the Lord. Now, Aaron was to serve God but he was to serve God under Moses. So there is something, a principle there which we can learn. That as God calls you, as you answer that call, be ready to serve under someone. Amen. Be ready to serve under 
And God has engraced us with wonderful parents here. So you can serve under them. And your life will never ever be the same again. You will touch many more lives. Amen. I don't want to dwell there, but I want you to get that. That you, the person, is very important. So don't look at your neighbor or someone else or at people who frequent standing here and think they are the only ones who are cold. No. Many are cold and you are in that bracket. Amen. And God wants you to answer that call. We have so many young people perishing, taking drugs, smoking, doing a lot of stuff out there. So we shouldn't join up with them, but we should answer God's call to reach out to them so that we deliver them. Praise the Lord. He wants us to do it. Now, the second thing is the clothing. <clears throat> now, understand this, brethren, <clears throat> that you cannot serve God naked or with tattered clothes. There is need for proper dressing, a proper dress coat that God has provided. You need to put it upon yourself. Now, we will maybe look at it later on. Let me go to the third thing, the oil, the oil, the anointing oil. You can't serve God without being anointed by the power and the Holy Spirit. You need him to anoint you. So these are part of the things which you pray. God, as you are releasing me, as I'm answering the call, release your anointing upon my life. Anoint me. And God does it. Amen? Because with God's anointing, you will do exploits when you follow him. Then we have the sacrifices. And God calls us to a life of sacrifice. A life of sacrifice. Giving ourselves. Giving our all. Giving our talents. Giving our resources for his service. He calls us to a life of sacrifices. Praise the Lord. You know, when some of us, we were in high school, still born again and so forth, we thought after high school, you know, you will now be free. You will not be waking up for preps at four or some, maybe time earlier on and so forth. Yeah, you will take some good naps. You will sleep at least, have some rest. But when God gets hold of you, when you answer his call, you realize I have to wake up even earlier than four to pray, to read the word. Now you have, it, it, it's like school was just something very low there. Now a standard is raised. Amen? Yeah. So what we are saying is this. That the life which God calls us into is a life of sacrifices. Amen. That's why we sacrifice. We want to come to church early. We want to pray for the people. Yeah. You want to deny yourself eating some stuff so that you pray trusting God to save somebody. Maybe in your family. Or to bring some shift in our families. Amen. So, a life of sacrifices. And the call is for self-denial. Losing all for the kingdom. Losing all for the kingdom. Now, number five, we have talked about the ministry. And God is calling us to the work of ministry. And that ministry is his people. Now, when you look at the world around us, God has surrounded us with his people. Amen. That drunkard whom you are wondering why he is drunk. That smoker, like where I stay, the person staying down is a smoker. And I, I think the lady, she's a smoker. 
So sometimes in the balcony, when you are outside, you want to feel the breeze outside. She causes you to close your door. Yeah. That person, such a person, they are God's people. And they are our ministry. They are our mission. Amen? So God is calling us for the work of the ministry. And that is our people. Where you work, in your family, in your neighborhood, your mission and ministry should be people. God's people. Amen? Amen? So, what are some of the things that are needed for us? Things needed of us. Things needed for us. Now, if you have your Bible, if you, fl you flip back just a few pages, you will come to the book of Exodus. Tell your neighbor, Exodus. It's a very important book, a very wonderful book. I know you love the story of Moses. And how God used him to deliver the children of Israel. That one is a story you can say with all clarity. But I want to draw you to Exodus 29. Yeah. So that we see the things, still these things which we have talked, but we see them now. So that we understand a few things. Amen. Amen. Exodus 29. Now, the Bible says, verses 1, I'll be jumping so that uh, we get to where I want. And this is what you shall do to them. This speaking concerning Aaron and his sons. To hallow them for ministering to me as priests. Take a young bull and two rams without blemish. So God narrates to him and he tells him what to take. Now in verses 4, verses 4, very important. Because it's leading me to number one thing concerning what is needed of us. Verses 4 it says, and Aaron and his sons you shall bring to the door of the tabernacle of meeting. And you shall wash them with water. You shall wash them with water. The, what God is speaking here is about cleansing. Tell your neighbor cleansing. You know, taking Aaron and his sons, bringing them outside at the door of the tabernacle and washing them. Washing them. Look at your neighbor and ask them, did you wash yourself? <laughs> Yeah, cleansing, cleansing, amen? Cleansing. Praise the Lord. Very important, cleansing. When, you know, I was thinking I will come with maybe some classes or something, some classes which are clean and others which are dirty so that you begin to see this aspect. But what happens in life is this. You can't take a dirty class and go to the tap or to the dispenser and get water and drink with it. Or pour in the soda for soda lovers and you begin to curl up. You will want to wash it and look at it. Is this thing clean? Praise the Lord. Is this thing clean? You look at it like this. Even when somebody gives you a class for water, you always look at it. If it has particles, maybe when they were wiping, they are there. You want to take a few, then you, then you pour in water now. You sanctify it. You clean it. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Before you take. So cleansing is very important. Amen. First John. 
I'm in First John, chapter one. Let's look at what this scripture says quickly. Verses seven to nine. Verses seven says, "But if we walk in the light, as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin." The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. Now, verses 8 and 9, it tells us concerning the condition of our lives. Why we need the cleansing. Because of sin. Everyone has sin. Tell your neighbor, even if you look good, uh, the Bible is saying, yeah, let them finish what the Bible says. <laughs> Amen? Yeah, they have put on well and so forth, but I'm talking about your neighbor. Yeah. So, what we are saying is we need the cleansing of the blood. The blood to cleanse us. And the genesis of it is our salvation. Where we come to the cross, we say, Lord Jesus, cleanse me by your blood. Cleanse me by your blood. Wash me with your blood. Make me whole again. And he washes us. Because the scripture says, even though our sins were red as crimson, they shall be washed as white as snow. We become white as snow. He cleanses us. So ask your neighbor, have you been to the cleansing fountain of Christ? Are you washed in the blood of Jesus? So we need that washing. We need that cleansing. Amen. Praise the Lord. So if you are not born again, maybe you just come to church as a good brother, a good sister. This is an opportunity for you to answer the call and say, Lord, I want to be cleansed. I want to be cleansed by your blood. And he cleanses you. He washes you. Praise the Lord. Now, another scripture there is Ephesians 5, 26 and 27. Verse 26 and 27, it says, That he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word, that he might present her to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she should be holy without blemish. Now, here, the scripture is talking concerning the church of whom it's you and me. Amen. That God is laboring to wash us so that he presents us to himself, a church, a people, of himself who have no spot or ringo. Now he's doing the cleansing, the washing by the water of his word. Tell your neighbor the word. As we continue to listen to the word, to read the word, to interact with God's word, it washes us. It washes us. Praise the Lord. It washes us. That's why this aspect of sanctification is an ongoing one. Where we are cleansed. So when you come to a meeting, don't lock your mind. Don't begin to sleep. As early morning as this. Don't shut up the preacher. Tell your neighbor, don't shut up the preacher. You know, some of us, some of us, when we were little children, when we were being washed, do you remember? At least somebody was, was washing you. You were sleeping in the bath basin. <laughs> no, Pastor Beatrice, she's loving because she knows it so much. Yeah, sleeping. Unatolewa kwa besi ni hata haujui. Wewe umesha alala. (laughs) 
But what we are saying is when you come, yes, I know there is peace sometimes in church because outside there is full of trouble and so forth. So when you come to church, you find there is peace. You just want to, yeah, to rest in the presence of God. <laughs> but understand this, that God wants you to hear the word. Tell your neighbor, God wants you to hear the word. Because it builds your faith and it cleanses you from the filth of the soul and the filth of the spirit. Yeah. The word cleanses us from the filth of the soul. Is of mind zenyenimuitu. Zote, the word cleanses in azitoa. Amen. Praise the Lord. The word. If you begin to let the word wash you. You know, how many people love movies in the house? We are not victimizing you, but anyone that loves movies in the house. Amen. Now, what happens is this. If you fill your mind, you are saturating yourself with movies. You always find, even when you are dreaming at night, when you are asleep, you are in the movie scenes. The movie scenes are still rolling in your mind. Okay? Now, when you fill your mind with that, what happens is the space is filled up. Unless space is created, you cannot receive the word. You cannot receive any new knowledge. That's why what we feed ourselves with is very important. So, we have to decongest. That's why we say we have to leave some things. We leave some things. So that we allow the word to wash us. And as we allow the word now, instead of looking movies, downloading movies and watching them, we are now listening to the word. We are downloading the word from our bishop, from our pastors. We are listening to the word. What happens is it cleanses our mind. Amen? It cleanses our mind. The word. Cleansing. Tell your neighbor cleansing. So the first call is unto salvation, forgiveness of our sins through the blood of Jesus. Then a continuous cleansing by the word of God. Now when you look in Psalms 19, um, <clears throat> Psalms 19, Verses 7 to 14, but maybe I will just look at verses 12 to 14. This is what the scripture says. After talking about the word, he's talking, actually Psalms 19, majorly he talks about the word, the word of God. Then verses 12, he says, who can understand his errors? Tell your neighbor, you cannot understand your errors. Yeah. The hidden sins, which no one sees. Even your thoughts. You may be thinking some things right now that are, that are unholy and you are in church. <laughs> now, verse 12 says, who can understand his errors? Then he cries out to God. He says, cleanse me from secret faults, secret sins. Amen. Hizo zenye hata ukija kuungama hawezi ungama. You know in Roman Catholic you have to go to the priest. Yeah, you go to the priest then you confess your sins. I did this. Bwana <laughs> sifiwe. You know I got born again when I was in standard 6. And later on now when I was in high school I was to be baptized, and I was in a Pentecostal church. So you had to go to the, we had a Kesha, then you had to go to the elder, one of the elders. We were crooked. Uh, so I went to this elder whom I was supposed to go to do some confession. 
and you know, I was born again. Even uh, sharing the word here and there, I, I was very strict. I've been strict, very strict with my life and so forth. And uh, now I began to look what we have, some of the sins I have been committing is the way we always see, you are seeing like, now, kule villages, kuna mangos, a neighbor, ama miwas, a neighbor, so you go there, you take, okay, you steal, then, <laughs> <laughs> then you say, I've just taken. This is not, yeah, you are helping yourself to feed yourself. So when I confessed it to him, it's like he was looking at this young man. Now what is it? I'm confessing my sin. Yeah, I've been stealing sugar cane, stealing bangles. <laughs> those are still sins. Oh, we want those big things. Picking pens. Yeah, your pen. It's not your pen, but you pick it. You go, it's stealing. Or uh, it's helping yourself. It's stealing. Yeah. So, <laughs> so he says, cleanse me from secret faults. Then verse 13 says, keep back your servant also from presumptuous sins. Presumptuous sin. Sins in ye. unangalia, isn't it? It's like, it's not sin per se. But the servant of God here, he's crying out. He's saying, cleanse me from such small things. Why? Let them not have dominion over me. Because if they have dominion over you, you graduate now to do greater sins. That's what the psalmist is saying there when you finish that scripture. Then I shall be blameless and I shall be innocent of great transgressions. So if the small sins aren't cleansed, they grow up to big sins. Amen. Mtu ananza kuiba kidogo sukari, aibe alambe akiulizwa sio mimi, alafu aibe ten bob. Aone mama hajatambua kuna ten bob imepotea. Sasa aone ah sawa. Siku ingine 50 bob sipote. Ana ana graduate tu aka anaendelea. Baadaye atakuwa mwivi hodari kwa nyumba na huko nje number two thing what we need or what is supposed of us what is needed of us number two is clothing I think i'm finishing with this clothing amen there are more things which we can talk Concerning that scripture, God wants us to be cloth. Tell your neighbor to be cloth. Yeah, it's very important. Not the physical clothing as you are shining like that. But God wants us to be cloth. Amen. God expects us to clothe ourselves with the clothes he provides. Not the clothes which we provide for ourselves. Amen. The story of Adam and Eve can teach us a lot because you see they provided for themselves clothes and still when God was presenting himself to them, they saw they were naked and they had to run away. So the clothes we provide for ourselves makes us naked before God. That's why in Revelation chapter 2 there, God reprimands a church that was saying they are rich, they have everything, and so forth. He says, you don't know you are naked. He tells them, come to me and buy for me so that you may clothe yourself. Amen? Are we in church? So you can be here and you are naked. Look at your neighbor. Now with a serious face. When God is looking at you, he's seeing you are naked. You need clothing. Tell your neighbor, you need clothing. 
Yeah, we don't have to walk with you and you're naked before God. <laughs> the clothes we make are limited, but that which God provides covers our everything. So, what are part of those clothes? Number one, salvation. Tell your neighbor salvation. Psalms 132 verse 16. Psalms 132 verse 16. The Bible says, I will also clothe her priests with salvation. I will also clothe her priests with salvation. And you know, we who are in the New Testament dispensation, we are all priests. Christ has made us to be priests unto God. Amen? So, God wants us to clothe ourselves with salvation. Ask your neighbor, are you really saved? Because that is the first clothing that we need as priests. The command of salvation we put on. That's why sometimes we look back, we see the old generation, Kina Pastor Wangombe, Pastor Petris, wakati waliokoka, wakiwa vijana kule, wakitembe wanasema tukutendereza. Even if we don't understand what that means. <laughs> but those guys were really saved. Wanatoleana ushuda, mpaka unashanga alikuwa anaenda kununua kitu lakini ushuda. Amen. Siku hizi ni hi hi. Ata praise the Lord haipo. Yeah. Hi hi. How are you? Poor. Finished. <laughs> salvation. Ephesians six seventeen. Ephesians six seventeen. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Amen. Take the helmet of salvation. Clothe yourself with salvation. Amen? We want to get saved. We want people to get saved, to clothe themselves with salvation. Amen? Because the priests were to put on linen, linen, linen. Now, linen is a symbol of, number one, the hiding of the flesh. Why? Because in God's presence, no flesh should glory. In God's presence. Then number two, freedom from the curse of self-effort. Because linen does not perspire or sweat. It doesn't bring about sweating. And sweat speaks of self-effort. Yeah. Trying to please God by your works. Yeah. Things which you do. And we know salvation is by grace. It's not by our good works. Because our good works are filthy rocks before God. So we clothe ourselves with his salvation. He provides salvation. Number two clothing is being clothed with humility. Tell your neighbor humility. First Peter 5.5. 5. Being clothed with humility. One other comment that we need is humility. Look at your neighbor and ask them have you clothed yourself with humility? And, and sasa mwambie kwa Kiswahili, mwambie acha kiburi. I think the Kiswahili puts it rightly. Yeah, kuacha kiburi. Yeah. First Peter. First Peter 5 5. Likewise. Likewise, you who are younger, be subject to the elders, clothe yourselves, all of you with humility toward one another, for God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. So the scripture is saying all of us, all of us, we need to do what? To clothe ourselves with humility. Yeah. Humility. Now, carnal pride has no place in God's presence. James 4, verse 6. James 4, 6 to 10. James 4, 6 to 10. So, the question I'm asking as we look at that scripture is, are you correctable? 
Can somebody correct you? Aseme Richard, hiyo nguo yenye umefaa sio mzuri. Aseme Richard, hiyo nywele nyoa. I wish I had. <laughs> Yeah. Asem, yani, can I be corrected? File unaenda hivi sio kuzuri. Can I be corrected? Ama mimi ni kichwa. So, pride is a bad thing. Fashion, uh, we were looking at James. Okay. Six to ten. But he gives more grace. Therefore, it says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be wretched, and mourn, and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning, and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord. And he will exalt you. Amen. So are you correctable? Can you be cancelled? Or you are the boss of your life? No one can correct you. You are saying it is my life and my way. Yeah. Are you correctable? You, humility, brethren, precedes every service to God. Humility precedes every service to God. We must yearn to be clothed in humility. The scripture says in Psalm 51, 17, that a broken heart and a chondrite spirit are the sacrifices God will not despise. So we need to clothe ourselves with humility. Amen. Buenas fiwe. Now, as I am finishing off, number three is cloth in righteousness. Cloth in righteousness. Another comment that God wants us to put on is the cloth of righteousness. Now, in Revelation 7, 9 and 19 verses 8, we get that we need to clothe ourselves with righteousness. Now, understand this as we look at that scripture. Having been born again by the seed of God, that is the incorruptible word of God. We are to display God's righteousness by the way we live, by our conduct, by our speech, by the things which we do or our works. Amen? We display his righteousness for people to see so that they see Richard is born again. So that they see you are born again. Amen? Yeah, people see what you say, what you do, how you speak. They want to see. And that displays our righteousness. Let's look at that scripture as we are wrapping off. Revelation 7, 9, 10. After this, I looked and behold a great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples, and languages standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Cloth in white robes. And that speaks concerning the righteousness of the saints. Amen? Now, have you read 19.8? Revelation 19.8. Fine linen, bright and clean, was given her to wear. Yeah. Clothed in righteousness. Speaking concerning righteousness. Amen. You are given to wear. Now, listen to this. In Matthew 5.16, the scripture says, Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Amen. So we let our light see you at the inner shine anywhere else but before men. When they see what we are doing, how we are relating with one another, speaking, how we are conducting ourselves, then they say, surely this person 
is born again, I want to be like them. I want to work like them. Amen? Lakini kama mimi nikikaa haywire, yani nafanya vitu tu kiholela, then people will not see God's righteousness in me. Amen? I will not be displaying his righteousness. Iyo comment itakuwa haipo na mimi. Amen? Are we in church? So let's finish on number four. Cloth with power. Cloth with power. Luke 24.49. Luke 24.49. Allow the Holy Spirit to fill you and to come upon you in power and empower you for divine service. Allow the Holy Spirit to fill you and to come upon you in power and empower you for divine service. Remember, we are just looking briefly on you are called and what you need to do. What is expected now of you? And number one, we have said cleansing. Number two, we have said is clothing. We need to be clothed. Amen? Let me ask you a question. Kuna mtu hapa amefaa tu vazi moja. Ulifaa tu. Filo ulioga mwone. Ukafaa tu vazi moja. Ndiyo umefaa. Ha? Si Kim, nijibu. Aha, ame kanusha hiyo. Hapana. Ama wanjala oo oh, unaona. <laughs> yeah. There are several clothes you have put on. Okay? Several clothes. So also, that's why we are looking at these several clothes that we need to put on ourselves. So that we are covered. No place is naked before God. We have covered ourselves fully. Praise the Lord. So the cloth which we are looking here is being clothed with power. We need to allow the Holy Spirit to come upon us. Because the scripture says, and you shall be endued with power. When the Holy Spirit comes, you shall be clothed with power. If you look at that translation. Yeah. You are clothed with power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. So he empowers you for service. He empowers you wherever you are. People look at you, they say, ah, this person... The way anaongea language yake kuna kitu. Yeah, kuna kitu. Na wewe uko too simple too the way you are. But because of the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit in you. Amen. Are you there? Let's look at that scripture. Luke 24:49. And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you. But stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Amen. Plus other scriptures. You can write, you can read for yourself. Matthew 3.16, then Acts 1.8. You can look for yourself. So most people don't serve God everywhere because they aren't filled with the Holy Spirit. And also the Holy Spirit is not upon them. Yani they are not clothed with the Holy Spirit. So they can't serve God anywhere. But when we are clothed with the Holy Spirit, with his power, then we find ourselves, wherever we are, una una tu, you are serving God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Isaiah 61. Isaiah 61, 3. To grant to those who oh. mourn in Zion, to give them a beautiful headdress instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the garment of praise instead of a faint spirit, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. Amen. So I want us to pray, and you know where you are. If you are not born again, the command of salvation is here. You can raise your hand and we pray together. Wherever you are, the command of salvation, very important. Now, for we others, we know we need to be cloth. Maybe some clothes are missing. 
I want you just to raise your hand. You will not come here. Just raise your hand so that we pray this prayer. I want us, all of us to pray, say, Lord Jesus, we thank you. We ask you to cleanse us with your blood. We ask you to cleanse us with your word every day and every hour from even the secret sins of our hearts. Cleanse us and make us whole. And we ask you, Lord, to clothe us, clothe us with salvation. Clothe us with the garment of humility. Clothe us with the garment of praise. Clothe us with the garment of righteousness. Clothe us, Lord, with the garment of power. And let us serve you. We choose today to answer the call to be your servants, to serve you in our homes to serve you in our colleges and schools, to serve you in the marketplace, at the, our places of work, and to serve you in the church and in our neighborhoods. Therefore, we ask you, Lord, to be with us, to give us the grace, and to use us in our generation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Give Jesus a hand of praise in the house.